Hey everyone, it's Cammie. So my shirt today says, Life is Good, Register Trademark, for some reason. Uh, well, I'm here to tell you that life actually is not good. The world outside these windows is a dystopian hellscape. We, people are dying by the thousands from a disease that didn't have to be so bad. The economy is in the toilet, slowly reopening for the financial gain of a handful of already obscenely wealthy people. The United States is a failed capitalist experiment run by the just the world's dumbest fascists. But that is only a small part of what we're talking about. Or we are talking about a tiny sliver of that dystopian hellscape. Um, also, I'm still in the process of moving, so my hair's up, my nails aren't done, no makeup, whatever, it doesn't matter. I was planning on doing this video earlier this week, but then uh, an episode of Samantha B, or Full Frontal with Samantha B, was posted on YouTube, and her and her team did almost exactly the same thing that I was planning on doing. So I thought, whatever, I won't do this video, I'll set it aside, and then next week, I'll pick up with my two-month HRT update. But then I thought, no, this, this is the kind of thing that really needs to be said. The more voices saying this, the better. So I don't care that I'm only saying this to my literally tens of subscribers. Fuck it, it doesn't matter. It needs to be said. We are deep into the 21st century, so I cannot believe that I have to say maybe we shouldn't be murdering black people. Like, how do we live in a society where that's still a fucking problem? The Human Rights, uh, the Civil Rights Act was passed in 1964. 56 years ago. Yeah, 56 years ago. That's mind-blowing that this is still a problem. But it's not just a problem, it is a huge fucking problem. There are mass protests outside in my small city all across the fucking country right now because black people are being murdered by the police. People who are here to fucking protect us. I have a friend who goes on quite a bit about all cops are bastards. Although when I see that acronym, my dumb shit fucking brain always says, assign the cop at birth? Anyway. I want you to go ahead and uh, buckle up because I'm about to go on a long, angry, extremely depressing rant, which admittedly is kind of on brand for me. So we'll start with some statistics. Um, Isa Noyola, Deputy Director of the Transgender Law Center in Oakland, California, said in a 2018 interview, quote, death, profound loss, the violence that surrounds us, it's constant. It's a significant part of the transgender experience. Murder rates. Uh, and I'm, we're going, I went with uh, murder statistics and not assault statistics for the, for a very important reason that I will get into um, in just a minute. So murder rates. In the United States, the murder rate is roughly 1 in 20,000. For men, that rate is only 1 in 100,000, despite the fact that 90% of the people doing the murdering are men. The murder rate for women is roughly 1 in 19,000. The murder rate for trans people is roughly 1 in 19,000, roughly the same rate for women. But when you factor in, but when you consider the fact that only about 3 or 4% of the population is trans, that is a, still a dramatic number of people. The rate for trans women goes up to 1 in 5,000. For trans women of color, that rate goes up to 1 in 2,600. That, in case you don't feel like doing the math, 
is 10 times higher than the national average. Now, I go with murder statistics, not only because it's the most extreme form of violence, but it is, and this cannot be understated, it is the smallest amount of crime against trans people is full-blown murder. So you can extrapolate out from there how much other crimes, um, assaults and other assaults, rapes, other violent crimes against trans people um, happens. Like, for example, um, did you know that trans people are considerably more likely to get UTIs, urinary tract infections, than, not, than uh, cis people? The reason for that is a very common term in the trans community of bathroom anxiety. Trans people are more likely, considerably more likely, to hold having to go to the bathroom while they're in public places until they get home because it's safer. Now, for trans men, it's not as much of a problem, usually, sort of. Um, and this is where probably the only instance of societal homophobia being kind of a good thing is men in bathrooms don't want to be perceived as gay or whatever, by looking at other dudes. So dudes tend to go into the bathrooms, do their things, and get the fuck out of there. Most men don't even wash their hands when they're in there. I'm not kidding. I had to be a dude for a while. This is, this is true. This actually happens. <clears throat> So, for trans men, they're less likely to be harassed. However, for trans women, there are large parts, or large communities of trans people where this is not an exaggeration, but to pass is to survive. If someone is considered to be, or if somebody is perceived to be trans, there are still viable, still many parts of the country where a viable defense strategy is trans panic. That's a temporary insanity upon finding out that someone is trans. At the possibility of being hit on by someone who is trans. That's, that will get people off fucking murder raps. Thankfully here in Maine, that's not a thing anymore and hasn't been for a long time. But, generally speaking, Maine is an extremely open and accepting place, so these statistics are national averages, whatever. Um, it is not uncommon for to the bathroom thing. So, trans women, if they are forced to use a men's restroom, let me back up a little bit. Trans women allowed to go into a women's restroom if they they may get some dirty looks or whatnot, and it is extremely uncomfortable. They may be yelled at. Um, I did a whole video about uh, TERFs and transphobia online that I experienced, which I've had considerably worse since then, but that's beside the point. Um, so yeah, that trans women will get harassed in women's restrooms if trans women are forced to go into men's restrooms, well, that's when the homophobia really ramps up and starts to become extremely negative because it is really common for trans women to be harassed or assaulted in restrooms. Like, really bad. Anyway, I wasn't planning on talking about bathrooms very much, but rant. Anyway, so, where the fuck was I? Um, yeah, murder rates. So we talked about murder rates instead of assault rates because there's not a whole lot of data about violent assaults. So that would be just being beaten up or um, raped, all relatively common, unfortunately. More than half of trans people who have been polled have uh, reported some sort of extreme violence against them. Not just being yelled at or um, 
you know, even shoved around or that sort of thing. No, extreme violence. More than half. So think about that. Um, right. So here's where we get back to the assigned cop at birth. Um, the all cops are bastards. So I want you to imagine a situation. If you are trans, you probably don't need to imagine this because it has likely, or something very similar to it, has happened to you. Um, it's also entirely possible if you are some other part of the LGBT, Q, I, A, whatever, community, these sorts of things have likely happened to you or someone very close to you. So think about this. Put yourself in this situation, especially if you're not trans. You are out one night, you're walking yourself home, and you get harassed. Some frat boy, some drunk frat boy douchebags start yelling insults at you. You just kind of say, whatever, fuck them, keep your mouth shut, and move on because you just want to go home. Well, they don't take that. They surround you, stop you, and proceed to beat the ever-loving fuck out of you. And then just fuck off and leave. In that situation, what do you do? Do you call the cops? Because most people don't. It is estimated that over half of these types of situations or violent assaults go unreported which I think I already said, but whatever, I'm ranting. Um, over half of these go unreported. So do you call the cops? Probably not. You probably instead go home, get cleaned up, and cry yourself to sleep, hoping like fuck that you are not one of the 40% of people who come out of attacks like that with permanent disabilities. I'm not talking about people who come out of it bruised, or uh, hurt for long periods, or even like scarred. No, permanent fucking disabilities. Blind in one eye, um, a leg broken so you can't fucking walk correctly for the rest of your goddamn life for the simple crime of fucking existing. So do you go home, do you cry yourself to sleep, and do you get haunted and horrified by that experience for the rest of your fucking life? until it happens again. To quote someone on Twitter that I saw just a couple months ago, she posted something to the effect of trans people be like, I'll try to keep my PTSD a little quieter for you. This just... I did one about childhood trauma. I'm not going to repeat too much of that. That is also a problem. But that's not what we're talking about right now. So to bring it back around, why don't you call the cops? Before we address that, let's talk about another more common scenario. Assault in the street is only one in four. The vast majority, 75%, happen in people's homes. Part of this is hate crimes. This is people being followed home and attacked there. I. There were two people in 2018 in alone, alone in Texas, who were locked inside their homes as their homes were set on fire, and they were burned alive in their own fucking house. <clears throat> anyway, imagine going on a date with some dating while trans is. A fucking nightmare for so many reasons but a big part of it is you go on a date you go to someone's house and turns out they were not into you they just wanted to fucking murder you or smash you to pieces and leave you outside most trans murders are bodies that were just dumped in the street afterwards shot beaten whatever and just left there or, as it's the case in uh, a lot across the country, um, stuffed under a hotel bed, 
You know, because that's another place that people go for some intimacy after a date. But, police. Why don't you go to the police? Police are woefully undertrained. They are. I'm someone who's bipolar, so I could tell you lots of horror stories about how police traumatize those in crisis because they just straight up arrest them. That's not how you treat someone who's in crisis. As someone who did a lot of long-term care, I can tell you that it is absolutely fucking horrific the way police treat the intellectually disabled. It is infuriating. But trans people also experience terrible situations. So do you call the cops after getting assaulted? After having the fuck beat out of you? You know, maybe you can't stand up right. You probably gotta go to the hospital. Maybe you get decent care. Maybe you get shuffled off to the side. All well. In terrible pain or whatever, whatever horrific scenario your brain just cooked up. And then when the cops show up, they uh, likely don't believe you, they harass you, and even if they do, take you seriously, it is extremely, statistically speaking, extremely unlikely for those drunk frat boy douchebags to ever even be found, let alone face consequences. Here's another statistic for you. Trans people are three times more likely to suffer violence from police. So, you call the cops, you're running the risk of not only not having your shit taken seriously, not having the people who attacked you, and four times out of ten permanently disfigured you, um, facing any repercussions, let alone being caught, but you also are more likely to have the cops just fucking pile on and make it worse. Three times more likely to face police violence. So fuck the cops. Seriously. They don't... There's so many things the cops don't... are ridiculously inappropriate to be, to be called on to be... to be used in that situation, in that scenario. Trans people need advocates. They don't need macho, wannabe fucking soldiers tromping around with heavy weapons. They don't... They need support. The city where I live, it's a city of less than 80,000 people, yet my police department has a fucking tank. They don't need a fucking tank. We've never had riots in the city as far as I fucking know. But hey, at least the cops in my city don't tear gas peaceful protesters. So that's a thing, I guess. So what the fuck do we do about this? Um, it's easy to rant and complain, especially as someone who enjoyed male white privilege for the bulk of my life. Um, not enjoyed like I enjoyed having it, but more like I lived into society where it was fucking forced upon me. I didn't, I wasn't scared for my life most of the time. I didn't fear that I was gonna get, have the shit beat out of me just for fucking existing in public or in private according to most of the statistics. But it's a fucking problem. And what do we do about it? Well, 
Keep protesting. The protests are working. The Silva, uh, the um, Supreme Court actually upheld a ruling. It was either this week or last week. I don't remember which. That trans people are protected by the Civil Rights Act. Again, 56 years ago, we are actually protected in the workplace from being fired. So it's pretty limited, but I'll take what I can get at this point. Um, anyway, keep protesting. Um, if you can't get out to protest, it's June. It's Pride Month. Um, because there's a pandemic out there, like I previously mentioned, that people are still fucking dying from, most pride parades and whatnot have been canceled or put on hold or whatnot, but I want to remind all of you that the reason pride exists is because a black trans woman threw a fucking brick. If you don't know much about the Stonewall Riots, look it up. It is an important extremely important part of our history. Not just as trans people, but as just people. Look it up. Don't watch the movie? The movie had extreme whitewashing. Instead of a black trans woman throwing the first break, it was some random white dude? Anyway, Keep protesting because protests are important. Protests change things in ways that lawmakers who don't give a fuck about the regular person cannot do. Let me correct that. Not cannot do. Fucking won't do. I live in Maine. One of my senators is Susan Collins. Remember when I mentioned the dumbest fucking fascists on the planet? She certainly qualifies. Here in Maine, speaking of fascists, as a little tiny mini side rant, we recently got rid of the rest of our fascists. We had a fascist governor, senators, and representatives. We finally got rid of them. Except for Susan Collins, she's still hanging around. Hopefully not for too much longer. Mini rant done. Go protest. If you cannot personally go out and march in the streets, if it's not safe for you to do so, then there are lots of other ways. You can make internet rant videos, which is what I'm doing today, right now. You can uh, support any of the groups that are out there supporting the protesters. There's um, bail funds and so on and so forth. There's there's the ACLU, um, that's the big one that I always go to because they are right on top of uh, civil rights issues um, and civil liberties, which is right in their name. Anyway, um, the biggest thing you can do, and this is a thing that I have said numerous times, this is a common refrain for me, the biggest thing you can do is be part of the conversation, to talk to people, to understand what other people are going through. Before I realized I was trans, I didn't realize how bad the statistics were. I knew trans people were treated differently. Um, I knew we were often victimized, but not to the extent, not trans women of color being 10 times more likely to be fucking murdered by police.
but by becoming part of the community, I learned things. If the conversation had been broader, I would have known it a long time ago. I would have known about how bad systemic racism is if the conversation were broader. So talk to people. Be part of the conversation is, simply put, the most important thing you can do. If you are friends with or have a loved one who is a different gender, a different race, a different uh, orientation, who is just generally different, then talk to them. There are husbands and wives who don't talk about the difference. So there are a lot of men who don't realize that women are four times more likely to be murdered in the U.S. than men. I had to become trans before I even thought about personal safety the way that I have to now. My old counselor that uh, I stopped seeing some time ago, the one I mentioned back in February, gave me plenty of tips on safety. And I realized while she was running through these things that it wasn't that she was giving advice to a trans woman. It was that she was giving general advice to another woman. The steps she had to take as just a cis woman to stay safe were things that I never, ever imagined to be true. So, have the conversation. A lot of white people don't realize what black people deal with every fucking day of their lives because no one's talking about it. And that needs to stop. And that's why I say these protests are working because people are having conversations. So, common refrain from me, reach out to your friends. You could save a life. That life might be your own. I'm going to leave it there. Um, or I'm just going to get really upset again. Yeah, I'm going to leave it there. So I just noticed that my camera shut off in the middle of my outro yesterday and now I get to reshoot it, which is fine. I was crying the whole time anyway. So the YouTube stuff. Uh, if you like the video, go ahead and click the thumbs up. Share on social media if you dig it. Uh, it really helps the channel out. Um, if you find value in what I do overall, I invite you to subscribe. Um, you can check out any of, the, any of my other videos, either over here or down here, depending on what platform you're on, whatever, you know, how YouTube works. Um, I'll put a link in the description. I was talking about places that are good to support. I'll put a link in the description to Main Transnet, uh, which is one of the more prominent local trans support organizations if you're looking for places to support. Um, if, you're, if you have the money, and only if you have the money, I'm still running the GoFundMe to pay for my laser hair removal. Every time I do one of these videos, I put $20 of my own money in it. So eventually we will be funded and then I'll be able to, uh, to get that taken care of. Speaking of money, I also started a Patreon uh, for a couple bucks a month. You can be part of all of this. The money goes towards uh, supporting this channel and supporting my other channel, uh, as well as independent movies, which I'm going to be getting in, getting back and doing again. So. Yeah, um, I will see you guys next time. Remember, I love you. You're valid. Wear a mask, wash your hands, bring an umbrella, stay safe, and of course, we got to fight the power I'll see you guys next time.